Hello and welcome to server-side programming with PHP and MySQL. I'm Jeff LaBeouf and in the second video we will review creating databases and tables. So I wanted to begin by talking briefly about the architecture and that we'll be using for most of our projects. So PHP is it's called server-side programming language which means there are programming functions that will uh, occur on the server that the home user uh, won't really see. So most of the time when we go to a website we can sort of see everything that's displayed on our screen and we can also see the uh, HTML markup which is on that page. But with PHP we can actually perform um, programming instructions on the server bef and simply render the output on the uh, home user's web browser. So we can hide things like variables and um, you know, s uh, have information display on the home user's uh, browser more dynamic in, in a dynamic way. Now, oftentimes we want to store information. So a typical example would be a website that allows you to create an account. I'm sure a lot of you have accounts on various websites like maybe YouTube or Google or with your email provider and that information is typically stored in a database so in our projects we'll be using MySQL now the the language for our database of course is SQL which is a simple query language but MySQL is the product and this is a um, this is available as part of the XAMPP package so when we install XAMPP, it installs the PHP uh, on the web server, which is uh, Apache, and the MySQL database server. Now it's important to note the home user isn't really connecting directly to our database. So when they log into the, uh, the new social network that we've just created, for example, uh, they're not really connecting directly to our database. What they're doing is they're accessing our web interface that we've created and the website is communicating with our database. And what that means is when we create our connection script which is the script that the website will use to open connections with our database uh, we will need some information uh, information that allows it to connect to the database securely like a username and password. That's not the same thing as the home users name and password. It's, it would be the super, uh, the super account that the website would use to access the database. Okay, so that being said, let's get to work. Alright, so this is PHP My Admin, which I have up here on the screen. And again, if you uh, recall the way to access PHP My Admin, is to turn on the XAMPP control panel and then in the URL type in localhost slash phpmyadmin and it will load our home page. So we have a series of databases here. These were created by, P, uh, by XAMPP so we just want to leave these alone. These are just default but we will need to create our own databases for our various projects. So I'm going to create a new database here. This will be a, simply a test database. We have a test there, so I'll call this something a little different. But just for the purposes of uh, using phpMyAdmin to create a database, a table, and a user account. So if I click Databases, the Database tab, I can create a database. I need to provide a name. Now your naming conventions cannot have spaces, so you want to keep that in mind. Uh, if you look at the examples, they use an underscore instead of a space. And that's a pretty common technique. So let's call this test database. Okay, that's the name of our database. If I press create, I get confirmation that the database test database has been created and I can see it over here. It looks like it didn't fit on the whole line, so... Ah, let's see if we can change 
looking at. No? Weird. Okay. I can see it right there. All right. If I select it, uh, there are no tables found in this database. We haven't created any yet. So let's go ahead and create one. Let's call this members. So again, if we were creating our social network site, uh, we would probably want a database to hold our member information. I'm just going to make this simple with three columns. And there we go. We have go. All right. So now there's a form. We need to sp we need to um, specify our columns. So I have three three rows of information, and these are actually our column names. So for our first column, I'm going to choose ID. So this would be our member ID, and the type is int for integer. Scroll across. I don't have to provide a length. There are a lot of different options here we can add. We're going to keep it simple. We're just going to choose auto increment. So now when a new user creates an account and our, our application connects to our database to store the information, uh, the um, ID will just simply auto increment to the next number. Now let's put name. And finally, date created. So name is usually just text information, at least it is for me, uh, and I'm going to use varchar, and I have to specify a link. So 255 is generally acceptable limit on that. Okay, and, and I don't need to specify any additional information for this field, but there are things we can do like making the field unique which will come in handy in later projects. For example, you may have a f column instead of name, it might be email. And you probably do not want more than one member with the same email address listed in your system. So in that case, you would want the, uh, the column to be set to unique, which means uh, each entry in this table would have to have a unique field there. It would have to have a unique value for email. And under, let's complete this with date created. We want to specify a date. Okay. And that's all good. We're ready to go. We'll press save. Okay, great. So there is members. It's a good idea to get in the habit of documenting your applications. I will often use Visio to document document things like databases. This is a very simple example, but it's very easy to create a complex database system, and uh, you don't want that to get uh, to run away on you. Um, the complexity to grow to the point where it's difficult to manage or make changes too easily. So documenting that information is important. Now, we have our database created and we have a table in it. We need a user account. So we can connect to phpMyAdmin and actually fill this information. We click Insert, and that allows us to actually just create a new, um, a new entry. But that's not practical for our application. We want users to be able to create accounts and have this information stored. So that means our database needs an account. So to do that, you click Privileges. And we can see that um, there are users who are here, um, like the, the root user. And of course, we don't want our website to use that. So we're going to create a new user just for this database. So for username, we will um, we'll just enter Jeff for now. Actually, it'd be more appropriate to use the site. So this is the test site, so we'll call it test site. Why not user? There we go. Okay, the host is actually localhost, so we can choose that from this drop-down menu. And the password. 
So this password does not have to be your password or something that's terribly easy to remember, but you do want it to be secure. You want it to be complex. So we have this generate password feature here. And what this does is it generates a string that's hard to crack. Um, and that is our password that our website will use to connect to the database. It will use this username, that host, and that password. This information needs to be recorded. You will need to code this in uh, Dreamweaver um, in order for your site to be able to connect to your database. So let's do that right now. This documentation folder, I'm just going to make a text document. We'll call this test site. Okay, open that up. in here yet. So we want host is local user is test underscore user the password is now what? Here we go. We'll copy this and paste it. Save it, and now we have our documentation. Okay. Grant all privileges on database, test database. That's what we want. We will add user. Okay, you have added a new user. One nice thing about using PHP My Admin is that it actually uh, it shows you the SQL that is generated to um, do what you ask it to do. Essentially, PHP My Admin is a uh, user interface, so we're, it allows us to interact with our database um, in a way that uh, is easy to use. We have this nice little GUI interface, and that is PHP My Admin. What is actually doing though is connecting to MySQL. It's connecting to the database and performing all of these actions that I ask it to do. And right here we can see the SQL syntax: create user, test user at localhost identified by, and there's our password. I think here we have grant, so we're granting privileges, um, and you know max connections and things like that. That about covers the basics of using PHP MyAdmin to, s to create a database for your website. Join us next time when we'll be creating a PHP script that will connect to our database.